Okay, so we seem to be back. Sorry for the little uh, shuffling chairs around, but uh, we are now with, uh, live with Sid. Hi, Sid. Hey, everyone. So uh, let me contextualize a little bit for the people because we are on Gen right now and the talk was uh, happening on Dev. But uh, Sid, can actually can I task you with explaining what your talk was about in about one to two minutes? Yes, sure. Uh, so the talk was called Maintaining the Maintainer's Attribution as a Model for open, uh, open Source Projects. And the idea is that instead of uh, having an economic system based on supply and demand, which is capitalism, we have an economic system based on attribution and agreement, uh, the power of our words, taking on incentives in the world, and that uh, this can work for open source projects as a proving ground. And I think it can scale beyond that. And I, I hope it will scale beyond that too to, you know, in general. Okay, well, I think you did, I'm not sure if you rehearsed this before, but that was such a perfect <laughs> elevator speech for your talk. I am beyond amazed. <laughs> thank you, thank you. It's the adrenaline from, from being late and all the time zone shifting. Uh, You're not supposed to mention this, you know. Oh, yeah, 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 right, right. Been so, fine. Yes. Everything was fine. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. You know, the, the things we keep telling people, you know, is that Emacs can't, yes, you see us rustling and being really grumpy when we don't get prereq, but really the live event is one part of Emacs can't, but really the better part of it is just having all the talks out of the head of people online, easily viewable, with easily accessible with subtitles and stuff like this. So don't worry, it's fine <laughs> if you're all right for submitting a prereq, it's fine if you don't show up to the Q&A, eventually we will find you, we will ask you the questions and all the data will be out there. So don't worry yeah, about it. It's fine. Yeah, the magic of uh, the editing and stuff like that, yeah. Yes, but we don't have it now. So we'll have to stick, you know, time is convoluted. We'll have to stick with strict uh, adherence to chronology right now. So starting with, uh, Sid, do you want to take the first question on the pad? Okay, let's look at them. Um, so the first question is, this seems to assume that there will be money contributions commensurate with the value of the project versus everyone freeloading because there is no incentive to pay. Right, so actually there is an incentive to pay. Uh, so I think what the question is referring to is that everyone is going to pay to other projects um, or no one is going to pay to projects because they're free anyway and you can use them and you don't have to pay. Uh, but the one of the new things with uh, with attribution based economics is the idea that in open source projects we agree we all collectively agree on a fair market price for a project and this isn't a price in the sense that you are prohibited from using the product until you pay the price but rather it's for an accounting purpose which is that if you pay more than that price then that means you are now an investor and so you can sort of, that means you are now attributable in future revenues that come to the project. So if you think there's a project that's going to do some nice things, um, you can essentially buy shares in it. Except these are not ownership shares, they're shares in attribution because you contribute value by contributing money and that's attributable. So um, there is an incentive to pay. And I think, but also beyond this, um, the, the financial model is incredibly complex. It is much simpler than what we have today in a capitalist world, but still finance is a very complex thing. And I think we're in the very, very early stages of uh, figuring out the financial model. And I, I think there's a num there's tons of open questions, needs a lot of help from people uh, to figure these out. So, you know, there's this promising angles here, but I think we have a lot to work out as well. Um, should I go to the second question or? Uh... Yeah, feel free to do so. You are the master, you're in Q&A. Okay, um, so the second question is, are you aware of projects like OpenQ? Would that fit the model in your opinion? Um, I'm actually not familiar with OpenQ. So maybe I should just move on to the next question and come back to that if we have time. Sure. Uh, the next one says, I see incredible amounts of overlap with the source cred system where attribution of antecedents, graph of contributions, fair in hindsight, back propagation. Oh, back propagation, interesting. I'm, I'm sensing a pattern though. So uh, you are being exposed to stuff that you do not know, which is amazing. That brings uh, opportunity to do research later on, but feel free to delay those questions until perhaps I would invite the people who ask those questions in the pad, maybe to describe in a little blurb that Sid can read what is the uh, meaning of those particular platforms. And in the meantime, Sid, you can move on to the next questions. 
Sure, but I will say one thing on on the subject of both of these things, which is that um, I think it's uh, significantly underappreciated the extent to which value is created in the world that is both independently created of other value that happens to be very similar, as well as um, dependently related and un and that that may be unknown. And this is something that I call subliminal trans transmission, which is um, like if you think about a turbulent flow. You know, and that's what our world is. You know, we like to have all these linear narratives and simple stories where I think if you take all of Wikipedia, right, even a single person's life has more information and richness than all of Wikipedia. So when you think about it in those terms, you realize just how small our stories are in expressing what really happens and what has really happened in the world. So from that perspective, I think uh, there's this thing called subliminal trans transmission, which is like a turbulent flow where you have little vortices that appear here and then they disappear, they're gone. But then you see them again here and they're like bigger, but they're the same. And then you see them in a different place and they're not the same, they're different yet somehow the same. And I think our world is like that. And if we have an economic system that's capable of not saying that, oh, it should be this other way, which it isn't, but in fact, we see this is how it is. Let's make sure that we recognize this and empower the right voices given that this is how the world is. And from that perspective, I think projects like OpenQ and SourceGrid and any number of others might exist, which are creating value in the world. And I think that we all deserve to be empowered. You know, If we're creating similar kinds of value, then these are voices that have something useful to say for us moving forward, and they deserve to be empowered. Um, so yeah, it doesn't have to be causally related. You know, You can have empowerment of all of these different projects because they work together. So yeah, uh, very long-winded answer to a short question or non-question, <laughs> meta question. You're fine. You can be as long-winded as you want because honestly, you have been so eloquent in your answer and the little uh, and, and gestures that accompany these little vertices uh, do carry on with as much velocity as you want. We will be going until about 52, 53 of the current hours, which means we have about 20 more minutes. Also, we have a lot of questions in the pad, so I would prefer if Sid started answering the questions over the pad first, but okay. we are going to be opening the pad in about six to seven minutes if you want to join and ask questions live to Sid. But in the meantime, Sid, sorry, I'm getting tired. It's late. In the meantime, Sid, feel free to answer more questions. Sure, okay, thank you. Um... And the next question is, how is this different from money? Not in some abstract ownership versus attribution way. Open source funding is an incentive problem, which this does not change as far as I can see. Um, so on the one hand, it does add new incentives, uh, as we talked about. Um, I'm not sure about the question of how this is different from money. This isn't, this isn't proposing to replace money in any way. Um, Rather, it employs money as you know the mechanism by which we recognize value. I think money is perhaps something that can be um, revisited and um, you know reflected upon in the future. But I don't think we need to do that at this stage. At this stage, I'm content to rest on the black box abstractions of certain things that we've already developed, like money. Uh, as a means of exchange and as a means of recognizing value. And I think we can use that. So I'm not trying to replace money. Um, open source funding is an incentive program. How This doesn't change incentives. So I think we already covered how it does add incentives in the sense that you can invest in open source projects, which is a new incentive. And um, you know, there's, we also talked about how there are some open questions. I'm not sure if this is one of them. Uh, how would you approach a viable experiment? Um, so the prototype that we have, uh, that we talked about in the talk, so there is a prototype for those who didn't watch the talk. Um, we have an open source uh, project. You know, it's, it's a GitHub action. And you know, I'd love to support other platforms. I'm not married to GitHub in any way. I don't have any special affection for GitHub. Um, but there, but it's a GitHub action at the moment. And what it will do is when you follow all of the, uh, the processes in the constitution, which says, you know, you're an open source repository, create an issue that solicits related work reports from uh, members of the public, um, and then create this folder structure, which has a report of the contributors and this and that. 
once you do all of that like initial logistical work this github action will process fresh payments that come in which you report as single line item files text files everything is text input and output and then you know you can basically get uh, all the accounting done for you by this system so that's what the nature of the experiment is and uh, i think we're starting with just one or two repos because there's tremendous number of unresolved questions and it's all going to be resolved through dialogue agreement we all decide how this thing works um and i think you know there's um yeah so we'll see about how the experiment goes uh, next question given that the over that oversight is a social process how do you constrain the cognitive and time burdens of deciding the values of attributed contributions okay this is a great question so first of all um you know let's talk about long-term vision right long-term vision i don't imagine that any of us that is the actual contributors to the projects are going to have to worry about this at all we're not going to have to engage in this process of what is called dialectical inheritance attribution which is, you know, it's a lot of work. There's all these standards and precedents and how do you compare ideas versus works versus the materials that went into the project. It's a very hard problem. And I think it's something we'll be improving upon for possibly even decades. But at that stage, I believe there will be experts, much like today's investment bankers and lawyers, investment uh, IP lawyers. These are the people who are going to specialize in it. They're going to be professionals. And that's the kind of work that they're going to do, and we can leave it to them. But at this stage, yes, we have to do it. We have to set these principles and uh, standards in place. And um, how do we constrain that? We start with simple heuristics. So initially, we want to have, you know, if you can imagine, this is, I don't know, this is probably a bad metaphor, but if you have like a big hole and you're trying to patch it, um, you know, you don't, if you put like little tiny things on it and try to focus on little tiny things, well, okay, what I'm trying to say is um, order of magnitude, right? Let's solve the problem at the first order of magnitude and then get the little harmonics and like solve those over time. Um, so basically, we want to have usable, workable heuristics that are low maintenance that solve the majority of the problem for our immediate purposes and then iterate on those over time and develop proper models, which I think we will start to do um, in the next phase. The initial phase is heuristics that are easy and low maintenance and useful. Right, Sid, I, I just want to barge in a little bit. I yes, just want to let people know that we have opened up the Q&A uh, BBB window right now, so the same spiel as usual. If you want to join Sid and ask questions directly, we still have some questions in the pad. Don't worry, Sid will get to them first. But if you want to join and have a discussion with Sid, we have until about we've got about 20, 18 minutes left of discussion there. So please do not hesitate. This is a very interesting talk. We have a very interesting speaker as well. So use this opportunity, please. And in the meantime, Sid, you can answer more questions. Sure. Uh, should we take one from the field, or uh, I guess while people are thinking about it, I'll take one more question, maybe. Sure. Um, okay. So the next question is, um, how are the attribution amounts calculated? Um, okay, how are the attribution amounts calculated? This is going to be done through standards. So. There is a there's a repo, you know, if you go to the GitHub org account dream-org, D-R-Y-M-org slash foundation. Um, this count contains the founding documents of um, how we will manage this process. And it can it is it it will contain more standards. It has a few at the moment, very high-level ones, but we will keep adding more standards there that are general enough to be universally applicable. Then, and that can be specialized to the individual projects. Um, and the attribution is going to be decided by these standards, by uh, the members of the public, members of the community. Um, yeah. Um, and they're calculated, they must add up to 100%. So it's, you know, and, and it's okay, actually, I should say, one of the mechanisms by which attribution will be done initially is this heuristic procedure called the analyze, appraise, anonymize, attribute loop, 
what that means is we first analyze the project, decompose it into its components, and we can do any number of such analyses. Any number of people can do these analyses, and there can be a decision procedure for combining them. But that I digress. We'll keep it simple first. We analyze a project into its components. Then we, um, we agree on the proportion of value contributed by each of those components. Then we analyze the activities done by the contributors and anonymize them. And we say, this was done, this was done, this was done, this was done. This is how much proportion of value these activities contribute to each of these components. And then once you have this chart, this graph of all of these connections and proportions of value, then you unanonymize and you aggregate the sum of proportions of value by contributor. And contributor is not necessarily a person. A contributor can be a project. It can be um, an antecedent. It doesn't have to be a direct contributor to the project. It doesn't have to be someone who wrote code. It can be a person who created uh, a bug report or a person who had a good idea for the design. Um, and anyway, so once you do this, you aggregate by a contributor, you have a set of proportions that total up to one or a set of percentages that total up to 100 that dictate how the revenues that come into the project are to be divided amongst all of these antecedents and contributors. Um, the net, um, let's see, what's the next question? Okay, the next question is being written down as we speak. It's fine. We can wait a little bit. In the meantime, okay. I can. Uh, I'll. I'll just mention it's the. Uh, so actually, when we keep track of uh, you know presentation for EmacsConf, we do have slugs for them. And this year, the slug for your talks it was made, and you know it was not an anodyne choice because last year we also had another talk by a maintainer or. Well, the org maintainer, or one of the org maintainers, Bastian Geary, and it feels like um, Bastian's talk was mostly geared towards sustaining maintenance, and your is more about maintaining the software effort in general. And it feels like the two talks are related, but your seems to be more. I wouldn't say visionary. I think they are very complementary in nature. I'm not sure. Have you been able to watch Bastian's talk from last year? I have not, but that sounds very interesting. I'd, uh, I'll definitely check it out after this. Right. And I will now stop my blabbering, and you can answer the last question. Okay. The last question is, uh, what are your assumptions about human nature vis-a-vis uh, -vis self-interest versus altruism? Um, you know, the funny thing is, I don't actually feel like we need to opine on that um, if, you know, from the perspective of an economic system, you know, I mean, yes, we have to recognize that, you know, some people will say, oh, human nature is fundamentally selfish or, you know, we have to be good and we have to help each other. And I think both of these perspectives are not necessarily, um, you know, I don't know if they're necessarily the right way to think about it because you have you know, the idea about, um, well, capitalism assumes people are fundamentally selfish or they have to act that way in order to be rational in the system. That's one side of it. The other side of it is this notion of altruism, right? That somehow you have to help others and that, um, you know, there's like a charitable component and you have all these people who make billions and billions of dollars and then, you know, start giving that away, which, you know, if you're going to make billions and billions of dollars and you give it away then and like help the world, that's better than not giving it away and not helping the world. On the other hand, the fact that you got those billions and billions of dollars in a capitalist economic system, which fundamentally skews the value recognition in ways that, you know, is very, very subversive and very, very minimizing of the source, the true sources of value, means that you've led yourself to go down this path and essentially unwittingly and inevitably ended up causing a lot of problems too. Like it's not necessarily the case that if you're wealthy in a capitalist economy that you've created a lot of value because yes, you have, but at the same time, the net value is not guaranteed to be above zero really um, because capitalism can't express all forms of value. Um, so I don't think thinking about self-interest versus altruism is the right way to think about things from the perspective from the perspective of um, economic systems in an economic system where the incentives are so set up that the maximum value to all is recognized the most 
then it's inevitable that people will want to do that. And it doesn't mean that you're a naturalistic person or a selfish person. You're just going to do it because there are incentives that are set up that way that everybody agreed on. And um, I think in such a system, your own sort of spiritual inclinations towards this are secondary. No secondary. I don't want to say secondary. I want to say that they are, they are up to you, you know, and your actions in the world will be rewarded to the extent that you help others. The more you give, the more you will be empowered. So from that perspective, you could say that the system like rewards altruism, but at the same time, if you're just giving and you're not in a position where, um, I mean, this, the system ensures that if you give, you're also taken care of so that you don't have to choose between altruism and selfishness. Altruism is empowering yourself. So that's kind of the beauty of this system, really. That's the beauty of an attribution-based system is that you become more empowered by giving more. But we don't have to get into the spirituality stuff of it, really. It's, it's beside the point as far as the mechanisms of the economic system go. All right. Uh, I think that was the last question, unless I'm mistaken. That's the last one I see. Yes. Well, you did a fine job answering however many questions before. And very, uh, again, very lengthy, as you said, but very eloquent, as I will say to you. Um, there Thank is you. one question that appeared on IRC, which was the URL of the project. You mentioned dream.org slash foundation. Uh, would you be able to maybe type it out in the chat so that people can check it and I'll paste it on ISC for the person that was asking or on BBB it's fine too it's actually dream dash org slash foundation. oh that's why I did dream dot org which was the problem <laughs> yeah. it's a github uh, it's a github repo and actually sorry you should also check out um, dream dash org slash old dash abe old abe um, that is the billing prototype which is the github action which you can add to your repo and it'll like it's got all the startup instructions for how you can set up attribution based economics. Um, so I'll, I'll let me tell you about it. GitHub.com slash stream dash org slash old Abe. Good for you for remembering it. I will <laughs> place this in BBB right now. Sorry, not in BBB, in. Uh in the pad so that people can click on it. Uh, Sid, is there anything else you'd like to say? We are about at the end of the Q&A right now. Um, I guess, uh, you know, attribution-based economics is open for business, as it were. So if you can go to um, some of the repos at the dream-org um, GitHub org account, Many of those repos are starting attribution-based economics and simex.el in particular is one for the Emacs community. So I encourage you guys, and of course, Old Abe, that's another one that started, and that's the only one that's actually ready to accept payments and distribute payments because we have done the attributions already given that it was written in the last few days. But the other ones, we might start payments out, I think in um, January 1st. So between now and January 1st, we'll start doing the um, attribution process and, deciding you know, the antecedents, who's owed what, what proportion of value came from whom and all that stuff between now and then. And then we're going to start paying, uh, paying out from the repositories January 1st um, is the plan. So, so yeah, if you, can, if you can contribute to these projects, then that would help prove the, the model out and that would create incentives for people to join. So I encourage you to do so. Thank you. Well, thank you. You've definitely made a very nice case for it, and people can make their own mind now by checking the link. We really encourage you to follow up on a lot of the talks. You know, it's one thing, one thing that we always say with Sasha to the people, be, be they speakers, be they user group members, is that, you know, Emacs cons and user groups, any kind of community activity for Emacs is about curiosity. And it's one thing to ignite the flame of curiosity in some people's. It's actually much better to actually follow the uh the fuse and see where it leads you because you know it's a little fuse a little tiny flame a flicker of a flame a flicker of light going in a direction that might explode so much curiosity later down the line i was talking earlier with uh blaine about you know oh <laughs> last year it was presenting it it had only been six it had only been I can't speak English. It's uh, 10 45 a.m. in my uh, p.m. in my time zone. I'm starting to tire. But 
he, that he had only started using Emacs six months prior to presenting, and he was already so proficient in it. And it feels like it's kind of like in Lost, you know, when you have the rope and you pull on the rope and it brings you so far away. Well, do follow this curiosity, be it for what Sid has presented to you today, but for any other topics that we've presented to you today. So thank you so much, Sid, for all your time, all your presentation and your answers. Thank you so much, Leo. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me.